We have insubordinate nobility. None of our subjects are more associated with the war than the nobility. Generations ago, their families served us or the states before us and won their current status on the field of battle. Ever since, most of them have kept their old traditions alive, training for a life in the field and making connections with others of the same inclination. The current state of affairs in our country, however, has left us with few members of nobility wanting to fight our battles. Insubordination has become widespread among the higher officers, and we have good reason to suspect more than a few of them hope for an unsuccessful war. And my only option is... Unfortunate. <laughs> Portugal gets disloyal officers. Okay. Yearly army tradition minus one. Alright, let me explain where this event's coming from. So, F1, F4, to look at the estates page. So, what's happening is because the nobles have red level loyalty, because the, loyal, the nobles are mad, we have these random events that can fire. There are good events, neutral events, and bad events. They're mad, so we can, we can get bad events, and that's what just happened. Because we weren't nice to the nobles, we're getting disloyal officers, which reduces whatever. <sighs> Great. So, so also, that's, we have... That's the ramification um, for your earlier decision. Whatever. Let's eat cake. <laughs> we have a military request from France. Yeah, do you want France to have military access through our lands? Um, well, they're currently allied with us, right? So, with this war, so they have to move... Well, no, they don't have to move stuff through our lands. They have to move them through Spain. Oh, well, sort of. We're not allied to France. Uh, no, but aren't they taking part in this war with Castile? Yeah, they rented five troops, six troops, to oh, Castile. Oh, okay. And you can see them, they're right there right now in Tangier. They just lost a battle because they're not very smart. Uh, but yeah, there's really no harm in it, and we want France to like us, so I just say yes to that. I said accept. Cool, I'll accept too. We have a free advisor slot. Mm-hmm. We can take our second diplomatic idea. Should I do that before taking an advisor slot? Yeah, whichever one you it doesn't matter. It's time to colonize. Okay, wait, hold on. So, we took the exploration, so now we need to do, um... Do we do expansion? You mean, uh, colonial ventures? The exploration ideas? I think you're misunderstanding. Wait. So, we're not getting a new idea group, we're getting our oh. next idea. Got so it. There's a little highlighted in green. Oh, I see that. Okay, colonial ventures, got it. I, I thought we had a new, like, thing. <laughs> yep, that's not till Admin Tech 7. So the second one now we have a colonist, so we have more pop-ups naturally. Uh, we need to choose. So many pop-ups. Choose our native policy. Uh, yeah. So when you click on the little house thing, it'll in this expansion thing. There's three buttons over here where it says expansion. Yeah. We we can either do native coexistence, where we say we are adopting a live and let live attitude towards natives, which will decrease the chances that they rebel. We could be uh, trading, where we reduce uprising chance by fifty percent and assimilate them more or we could have native repression where we are going to treat them ruthlessly and uh can't we just do like a coexistence thing i would highly recommend native coexistence it's the best one because you don't have to put any troops on your colonies great the, the ai like the rebels will never spawn ever All right and then also we fulfilled another mission by by having yep. that first colonist now we can gain 10 prestige and get unknown frontier for 15 years oh Tactically, cool. you could you could save this if you wanted to use it when you have more colonists, but just click it. We get our settler chance right now. It'd be good. And we need to start exploring or start colonizing. So uh, we have one colonist now. At the very top, there's like four little faces. There's the merchants, the dip, the colonists, the diplomats, and the missionaries. Mm -hmm. We now have one available colonist, and he can be used to colonize uncolonized provinces. The best way to, like, find where you should colonize is you go to the ledger, obviously. Mm -hmm. <laughs> With a big list of all the provinces in the world. <laughs> where it came from, who knows. Um, so F1 inside the ledger, and then go to the right until you're on page number 12. This lists all of the possible colonies that we could we could start right now. Tenerife Wait, is the best. how did I get to... I just... I accidentally clicked out of that menu. How do I get back? L for ledger. Okay. And then F1 to go to the front of the book, to page 2, and then just go to page 12. So there are, th there are three places to colonize, Tenerife, Arguin, and Cape Verde. And if you want from the ledger, you can just like double click on the name, and it will take you to that province. So Tenerife is like right next to Castile. Uh, Arguin is down in Africa. 
on the coast. The Cape is down in Africa, right? Yep. And then Cape Verde is down here next to the Bay of Arguin as well. I see. So trying to decide like where to go, uh, you, you just basically want to colonize all of it. Tenerife has more development. It's got five development, but what we really want is colonial range so we can find the Americas. So probably Cape Verde or Arguin. I was going to do Cape Verde, actually. I was going to... I like that one. Go ahead. So yeah, you just click on the province then. And then in the very bottom left corner, there's going to be some information about it. It's it's uncolonized. There's a button to send a colonist. Just yeah, I click. see. Send uh, travel time is 61 days. So I can just send colonists to attempt to increase size of your colony. Go ahead. Yep, so in 61 days, he's going to start a colony. That's going to cost a lot of money for us right now. It's going to cost two ducats a month. If you have one colonist, then every colony you, you do is, is two ducats. And uh, if you try to go over that limit, which you can do by retracting the colonist and then sending him to another province, it's even more expensive. We can barely afford to colonize one province right now. We're probably going to lose money while we do it, but we have to get started because we're, we're Portugal. So. Okay. All right, so uh, let's actually turn off some of our forts so that we don't lose Mothball. quite as much money. Yeah, I just mothballed the fort in Evora and Malaga. Yep, I saw that. Okay, so we want to... So that's going to save us... Uh, each fort is a half ducat, so that saves us one ducat a month, and there's just no strategic reason to keep them on because the AI is never going to actually be able to siege that. We have too many troops across the, uh, the strait here, and they don't have naval superiority, so they can't get to that land. And Castile's making sorry, pretty good I'm progress. Gonna, I'm, I have to put some eye drops in my eyes as my eyes are getting dry. So if I'm just like, don't worry if I'm just like doing that. <laughs> just forewarning you guys. Oh my gosh, is she doing crack? What is that? <laughs> That's how you do crack, right? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, chat wants to know why we're not exporting people. Let me just explain that uh, real quick. So the new exporting people mechanic is something that they just added recently in the Golden Century DLC. That is not possible if you're colonizing lands that are not in North or South America. So if you colonize, uh, say, Tenerife, which is technically part of, I think that's actually part of... Okay, Tenerife is considered part of Africa, but um, it's it's not in the New World. It's the Old World. Africa and, and everything here, you don't get to be able to... You can't do that. You can only do it in the new world, so that's why. Is that what that is? That's math? I mean meth? Math? Meth? Meth? Math? <laughs> it is, um, preservative-free extra protection eye drops. Is it maximum, <laughs> maximum strength? <laughs> maximum strength, yeah. That That's a reference, by the way, to Seinfeld. No, didn't get it, sorry. He's a comedian. I don't know if you've heard of him. He was in I don't a show. I actually really watch. I do not watch a lot of comedians. He was in a show called Seinfeld. <laughs> I want. I barely watch Seinfeld. Okay, I was more of a Friends person. I'm rewatching Friends right now, actually. Gotta love when the AI derps out like this. So because of the tactics that we're using, just yeah. want to show you, I'm like a pro, man. I know what I'm talking about. So because of the way we're handling the war, like the AI has no idea what to do. They can't. They don't want to fight us. We're just sitting on the war goal. They're, they know they're losing, but they know they can't fight us. So watch the armies right now that are in Mers el Kibir. There's mm -hmm. like his entire army is there, suffering 3.6% attrition, and he keeps on issuing and canceling commands because he doesn't know what or where, like what to do or go. He, he has nothing that he can do. Well, he just stopped as I pointed it out, of course. But <laughs> they they don't know how to win the war, so they're just gonna let us just let us win. The, the PayPal states have declared war on Venice. Good. The Pope is going on his own crusade, apparently. And Castile might win the Siege of Gafsa, 35%. Cross your fingers, no luck. Is that my real hair? No. It's not my real hair. Her real hair is the pink hair she had on earlier today. <laughs> yeah, my real hair is the, is the pink. It's actually the lavender hair, I'll have you know. Right, purple. The purple hair. We asked for pink hair, so he gave us purple. <laughs> and I gave you pink. Uh, we do have a missing advisor right now, so... Yeah, um, I was gonna hire one. Oh, wait, we got another... We got another event thing. Um, 
colonial company goes bankrupt. <laughs> One of the colonial ventures has run into serious financial trouble. If no action is taken, the colonists could suffer. They knew the risks. It's not my problem. Or it's time for us to step in. If I choose to say they knew the risks, it's not my problem. The population of settlers in Cape Verde changed by 50%. And if I step in, it's we lose 50 ducats, which we cannot afford right now. So are you are you saying you're willing to trade the lives of like 58 divided by two people? You're willing to you just want to kill like 29 people for 50 ducats? Oh, my gosh, you are. The price of human lives is low for you. <laughs> Where's, I'm, I'm gonna go grab my Rococo wing and put that on after this. <laughs> Alright, go ahead, kill him. Execute the people. Go what, ahead. What would you do? Would you spend the duck? Oh, I, I would totally kill him. I just think it's funny because you react that way. You, you think that it's such a bad thing. It's a bad thing. Just kill him, it's fine. Uh, Alright, so we could also click on that province again. There's a little button that we should click. See that little okay. green plus? We could make this province into part of a trade company. Trade companies are overpowered. They're strictly better in every single way than regular provinces. So if you can do it in any province, you should always. Okay, so wait, I can do, yeah, assign this province to your trade company. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. So what that's going to do is give us more naval force limit, which is great because we're a coastal, you know, naval nation. Um, and it also gives us more trade power. And uh, eventually when we have enough control of this area in Africa, we're going to get an extra merchant from it, which means more money. We can build fancy buildings there and stuff. Cool. Unfortunately, the army that was trying to siege down Gafsa just got killed. So the siege that was about I'm to complete. Genocide yet? <laughs> I'm sorry, the chat. <laughs> she isn't used to genocide. Yeah, I'm no. not used to genocide yet. So plenty of troops have died so far, but very, very, very few of them have been ours. So <laughs> that's great. This is a good war. Now, if we if wanted I to, my Marie Antoinette wink. You guys are gonna make fun of me. It's so great. If we wanted to try to end the war sooner, we could be more aggressive and actually try to siege down Bez, but I, I would recommend prudence. I was about to say, do we really need to do that? <laughs> no, I wouldn't. I mean, we have the war goal. If we just wait, we're going to end up with 25 total war score from the ticking war score. We're at 13.2 right now, so we're about halfway there. Yeah, uh, let's just wait. Just, just, I mean... I'm just going to look at the advisors while we do that, um, and it seems like I can only pick one right now. Yeah, there's only one dude that's not grayed out. Oh, it's because we're poor. Oh, okay. I, I guess we'll wait till we have new, more money. Yeah, those guys are level two advisors and they cost more to hire. The price is what you pay up front and then the monthly is also much higher. So we can only afford the, the cheapest guy. Oh, we got another. We got another event. Cardinal across the border. Sometimes we have the chance to set something into motion without seeming to have done anything. One such chance has arrived recently, when a cardinal living on the soil of one of our neighbors admitted to an agent from Portugal that he would consider moving across the border and support us in the Curia for price. While this may be tempting, there, are, there may be a greater price to pay if we take advantage of this, the wrath of the country he deserts. We will take our chances that they will never find out, which is we will lose ducats and gain 0.5 corruption. Um, Beria will be the seat of the new cardinal. Sal Salman Salmanica will no longer be the seat of the cardinal. 50% chance of Castile will gain diplomatic insult. Cast his belly on Portugal. Ca Castile's opinion on Portugal changed by negative 30. It is not worth risking, but the man who found him deserves a promotion. Gain one skill, spy work, net, spy network construction plus 25. Spy master of Portuguese heritage following the Catholic faith is either 50% cheaper for your country to employ. I actually think it's not worth risking. Great. Also, that spy master is a diplomatic advisor and it's a half price advisor. So that's the exact type of advisor we need. And he's very inexpensive. Yep. So I would just got him. do that. And then His I would also hire him. Jose Rebello. He's level one, right? Oh, perfect. Yep. Yeah, he, he only costs a half ducat a month instead of the full one. That's great. We're still losing money, but that's to be expected when you're at war. And uh, oh my, Okay, guys, don't at me with the pronunciations. I'm trying. Just call it... You call it Salamander. Like, here's what you do. <laughs> Salamander. Just 
If you don't know how to pronounce something, here's how I've learned to handle it after five plus years of, of streaming slash YouTube. Intentionally say it wrong worse than trying to say it the right way and messing up a little bit. Because if you <laughs> mess it up intentionally, then they could interpret it as you being funny or they could get upset, but you don't have any risk to yourself because you didn't really try. See what I'm saying? Okay. Just, Fair just, enough. Just make fun of it, you know? Just... <laughs> I'll, I'll just take it in stride and with grace. Just add extra letters for fun. Like, for example, <laughs> there's a country in the game called uh, Transio Shishashana. Mm -hmm. It's like tra Transio with a whole bunch of letters after that that I stopped reading about halfway through. Transio and Shishasha. Uh, don't try. Intentionally fail. If you try, we'll try to correct it and make it better. No, you guys, don't correct it. You make fun of me. <laughs> All right, there's a battle happening uh, really soon in Fez, so this is again up to you. Do you want to actually lose Portuguese lives and reinforce this bad fight where we're going to take a, a penalty, or no? Do you want to just sit and wait? Because we will win this I'll war just, eventually. I'm cool with sitting and waiting. Okay, let's just watch the Castile. Unless we could send Castile first, then we'll go to Fez. But unless we could do that, then no. Well, Castile's already there, but they don't have enough men. They're not even trying to reinforce, so I don't think we should. Yeah, no. Oh, yeah. can you try to pronounce that? technology research useless. Is it? Several prominent men in our country are pointing out that the path we are going when it comes to army research is utterly foolish and will amount to nothing. They demand that we stop the current approach and stick with what it was good enough for our fathers. They have a point. Lose 50 military power. Ignore them. 10 prestige. Lose 10 prestige. Well, prestige is worth morale of armies, which is important to us right now, because we're in a war. Um, but we'll lose 50 military power, isn't that bad too? It is, but we're also pretty far ahead of time on tech. And our enemy that we're at war with right now is on mil tech 4, while we're on tech 5. So we're about to take tech 6, we're already like way ahead of them. Uh, and, I don't know, it just comes down to your current situation. Like, normally you would take the prestige shit to protect your monarch points, because they're worth more. But when you're already ahead and you have nothing to spend them on aside from being more ahead, mm -hmm. I might consider keeping the prestige. It's up to you. You you pick. Can you say, can you pronounce this this word? T-R-A-N? It's in chat. People said it a little ways up. Transo <laughs> you, you, you see it up there? The now, don't ask me where the shashasha came from, but that's just how it's that's how they wrote it. That's how it's pronounced, right? The Vijarganar? 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 You mean, yeah. I think that one's Vijianagar, but that one definitely gets messed up a lot by people because of its most <laughs> obvious spelling. Yep. I'm going to say they have a point. I'm not happy about it because I don't agree with them. I do believe that we should ignore them and not let them stop the progression of science, but it's fine. Are you going for a science victory? I knew it. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, my 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 strategy, like I'm always overachieving with my sieves, so like I can go by by mid to end game, I can always take three different victories, or I can switch at least between two victories. You always got to keep one in your back pocket. So like I can always switch between wanting to go culture or science because culture is now done by tourism in Civ Five. So as long as you're just you just got cool shit in your country, they'll come. So. It's just like, okay, if I build a space station, not only is that cool tourist stuff, but also space. So it also depends too, because sometimes I like to one-up my friends when they're like, I'm going to go for a space victory. I'm like, oh, really? You are? Not anymore. I took it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's evil. I get really shady. That's evil. I mean, you, you, uh, I... you'd be really good at uh, at uh, CK2 and, and E4 with that attitude. That's the right attitude, the mindset. <laughs> Yeah. I get like really dangerously competitive. Like one of my ex, I was playing with one of my ex-boyfriends and like I saw him do this move where he moved one of his troops south of the fog of war and he was going onto the continent. And like, so I thought he was planning to settle and then get a, a colony that was going to attack me from 
underneath. So I got all my ships, I got all my units down there, and I was about to be like, do you want to play this game? He's like, what are you talking about? I don't even know what you're talking about. And I'm like, do you want to play this game? Because I'm about to wipe you off the map. And he's like, he's like, I don't know what I did wrong. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm like, I'm like, what is that calling me? He's like, I just took it there because there's silver. I'm like, you're not going to try and kill me? I go, I don't believe you. Went to war with him, wiped him off the map. He didn't want to talk to me for two days. Wow. <laughs> that's, that's brutal. 